Hello and welcome to Hamer Reviews. My name is Christopher Hamer and today I'd like to take a look at CF Express versus XQD cards in the cameras such as the Nikon Z6 and Z7 that have been upgraded to be CF Express compatible through firmware updates. When we look specifically at the Z6 and Z7, when they launched they had a single XQD card slot and it was highly controversial. Shooters have got used to having two card slots being able to back up onto a separate card and therefore reduce their chances of losing photographs due to corrupted cards. To be honest with you, this wasn't such an issue of XQD cards. There are very few actually verified instances where these cards have failed. And as a result, I guess Nikon chose to make the body a little bit smaller and as a result only have a single card slot. It's not something that bothers me. I was used to having a single card slot in my initial Nikon DSLRs. However, I guess some of you have become very used to it and as a result, it was quite a Ferrari. Anyhow, I digress slightly. In front of me, I have the XQD card and the CF Express card. The CXQD card here is a Sony. Um, it is 32 gigabytes and will write and read up to around 400, 440 megabytes per second. That is extremely quick and is much faster than even the best SD cards for the most part. There are some rare exceptions, but generally speaking, that card is much better um, than your SD card. They're much better made as well. Um, they have a stainless steel back or aluminium, either way, uh, metal back and front. Um, they feel very sturdy. You can't bend them. You can't see the contacts in the same way you can on an SD card. So these are very resistant to outside influences as it were. Next to it, I have a brand new ProGrade 128 gigabyte card, um, and this will go up to 1700 megabytes per second. That is a massive increase. I mean, in all seriousness, when I saw the speeds of these CF Express cards, I was really impressed. There's clearly been a lot of engineering that's gone into these, and as a result, the prices match that increased performance. A 128 gigabyte XQD card cost me around £140 uh, when I bought one new, and this ProGrade card cost me the best part of £250, so it's quite a steep increase. However, my logic was this. If I use um, CF Express cards versus XQD, I should get better performance in the camera, I should get better performance when I'm transferring files to my computer, and hopefully they'll be a little bit more future-proof so that when I choose to upgrade my Nikon Z6, um, hopefully the camera will have CF Express card capability and I will be able to um, just keep on using the cards I have without having to rebuy everything, because I assume that although we're seeing cameras that can use CF Express when they're actually XQD cards uh, compatible, we're not going to see CF Express cameras that can use XQD cards. I assume they're going to become phased out. So I did some tests. Specifically, I put the um, ProGrade card into my Z6 and I shot some uh, nature photography and I basically wanted to fill up the buffer and see if it was any quicker. Was the camera able to write photographs to the memory card any faster? And the answer is no. In fact, in my test, the CF Express card was slower at writing photographs to it than the XQD card. It wasn't a massive difference. It was maybe 5 to 7%. I think I got about 40 photographs from the buffer with the XQD card and about 35 with the CF Express card. But the point is that there was actually worse performance from the CF Express cards despite the massively increased cost and the, in theory, better performance. When I then transferred those files from the ProGrade CF Express card to my Mac through a Thunderbolt um, port, but it was a USB-C cable, to be honest with you, I couldn't really notice the difference. I think it was faster than the XQD card, but not by much. I assume that if you get a better CF Express card reader, perhaps you're going to get those better speeds. But personally, with the card reader that I bought from Amazon, I just didn't see them. As a result, I'm standing here questioning why you'd bother buying CF Express cards for a camera that has been upgraded to be XQD compatible. I guess there's some trickery going on inside the camera to actually make it compatible with CF Express cards, and that's where we're losing that performance. So if you are going to lose performance, I really wouldn't put CF Express cards into your Z6 or Z7, simply because the cards are more expensive. They are going to be less, um, less good in terms of performance. Uh, 
and you're not even guaranteed that these cards will be future compatible. If they were better performing, or at the very least the exact same levels of performance of an XQD card, part of me would go, yeah, it's worth the gamble, it's a few pounds more per card, but at least you're going to be able to hopefully pop them into some newer cameras and they'll work fine. The thing is, we don't know whether the XQD or CF Express cards are actually going to last when we see the latest generation of cameras come in. I mean, sure, at the moment they're being used, but give it a few years, you know, will they be phased out? I think if you look at compact flash cards, or if you look at SD cards, they've really proliferated the market, and as such, they were used for an extremely long period of time. But given that XQD seem to have only had a, like two generations, if you look at the sort of speed levels that are available, it, you question whether CF Express is actually going to hold out that much longer either. As such, if you own a Nikon Z6 or Z7, and I'm going to assume something like the D850 that accepts CF Express cards through a firmware update as well, I wouldn't buy them. I would really stick with XQD. There's nothing wrong with using a CF Express card, but if you, for instance, are a wedding shooter or you're shooting wildlife, you might actually miss a shot because you've filled up the buffer. And let's be honest, if you're using a Z6 and you're shooting at 12 frames per second, filling that buffer really only takes a few seconds. So you actually will come up against that issue if you are shooting that fast. I hope you found this useful. I, I genuinely couldn't find anyone else that had compared CF Express and XQD inside the Nikon Z series. Um, so hopefully this, this is a video that's given you some new knowledge and, and I'd like to see other people replicate this as well because I only have a single Z6 body. So if someone else could have a go in their Z7 or um, their Z6, it would be really interesting to see if they have the same results as I did. If you have any questions, pop them in the comment section below. I'm happy to try and help if I can and perform any extra tests if you can come up with any. Um, equally, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really does help. And thank you very much to those that already have. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.